you're looking for a luxurious crossover that's high on design and class, look no further because right here I have three of the latest and greatest crossovers from Lexus. The UX, the NX, and the RX. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you which one is the best. I gotta tell you guys right now there's a real problem and that is that Andre is way too wound up. Guys, here's the reality. What? And you and I talked about this before we did the video, okay? Yes. No acting here. Both of us have sisters, sorry to say, and <laughs> both of them make really good money, both of them need new vehicles, and both of them have talked to us, and this is the part that sucks, about getting them a new vehicle or helping them get a new vehicle. This is the most difficult thing for anybody in our trade, finding a good new vehicle that we won't hear about at the next family dinner. This is the baby bear. This is the little one, the brand new UX, and it's based on the Toyota CHR. This is the Papa Bear. This is the best seller out there, the Lexus RX Hybrid. It's also based on a lot of components from the Toyota Highlander Hybrid. And then this, the Lexus NX. Now this one, which is sort of the mama bear, I guess you would say in terms of size, is based on the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Which one do you think is the best looking? You know what? The UX, the baby bear, looks kind of like a sports car to me. You know, it's low to the ground, it's small, it's quick. But my sister does live in New York City. Right. With large potholes. Oh. So I think she needs something a little bit taller, which is why I love actually the look of the NX. I think it has a high chin. That's great, but you're wrong. This is the best looking one. What? Yeah, the RX. Lexus UX, the most modern design. It's the little falcon of the bunch. The NX, a little bit more bold. It's the baby rhinoceros of the group with its chest up high. The Lexus RX, if you're wondering what the whale mouth looks like, this is the answer. Fortunately, Mama Bear is fairly easy to get into. Unfortunately, Getting in and out of Baby Bear, the UX, isn't so easy. And if you want to go for the lap of luxury, get into an RX. Now you are inside of the RX, the largest crossover here. And I'm just over 6'2", and our friend Jeff is sitting right next to me. And as you can see, actually really good legroom. This is me sitting behind myself, basically. But look at my headroom. You know, still not great. Let's check out the NX. Let me try the NX really quick. With Jeff, of course. Okay. You know what? Legroom is kind of similar to the RX. Headroom, hmm. Similar, but that's okay. You know, I gotta say, my sister's about as tall as Jeff, and there isn't a ton of space. It's okay. I think I agree with you. Okay is the right word. Let me try the UX. Okay. Actually, whoa, my feet fit underneath the seat, but my knees are hitting. So definitely, this is a big change. Actually, headroom is similar. This is amazing. But yeah, taller people won't fit back here in the UX. No. I know this sounds strange and we never do this at TFL, but my sister lives on these. And I have a feeling so does Andre's. Big bottles. Water, vodka, whatever. The point is, is that these bottles don't fit in regular cup holders. We've already tried. Usually doors have space. And this is the NX. Now this is the RX and it has, everything's bigger. Not only that, but it has this little trick thing here. Oh, let's see, you can kind of sort of ram it in there, but at least you can put your bottle in the door. Now we're at the UX, the baby. Not only is it the baby, it has by far small store pockets. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get, uh, well, Dude, don't break it. Sorry, uh, but I can kind of get it in there, actually. I mean, granted, if I shut the door, it's going to take half your knee off, but the point is, is you can sort of yeah, get something in there. Okay, let me open the hatch on the UX. I have the key in my hand. 
Oh yes, my, my Russian dance actually worked, dude. Hey! Alright, so now I'm gonna try to get into the cargo hold because that's how we measure uh, volumes, right? Right, right, by putting Andre in the back. And Nathan, can you help me and, cl and close the door? Oh, happily. I mean, yes. <laughs> what? And Andre is uh, a little over 6'2". Uh, he recently had a haircut. Just want to make sure you're comfortable first. No, no. So as you can see, he's he's cramping up a little bit. Putting a large Russian in the trunk of a UX might not be advisable. Are you ready? I have to actually move the seat at smidge. Okay, so whoever's sitting over there would have to lean forward, which is Jeff. Tailgate kind of closes on the slow side. Got snow in my shoe here. Oh, hold on, I got snow in my shoes. Do you notice that there's a metal plate right here? And that this actually allows you to bind it up so you could actually lift the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm coming. Sorry, the kick wasn't working. And okay. I, I had to clean the sh uh, snow off my shoes just to kick it right. All right, so we established this is not a lot of space. Nope. All right, dude, let's check out the annex. Can I kick? There it goes. Yes. It's a little delayed. I'm getting better at this. Yes, you are. And you can also use the key, of course, to also open the rear hatch. And it opens kind of tall. Let me try this. Okay, I'll, I'll remove this shade. Let's not throw shade, okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Much more usable space. I'm afraid I'm gonna get decapitated. No, you'll be fine. Now, audience, as you're watching him go inside the trunk, understand that we're not advocating putting a human being in the trunk of any of these vehicles. Okay, can you do it? Open. Oh, there's one more point. I, I totally forgot to, to mention this. Um, all of them have rear wipers, right? So, rear wiper, and same with the little UX, but it's very different than the RX, and I'll show you that when we get to it. I'm sorry, are you ready now? <laughs> you doing okay? What can be so important that you have to tell them right there? Windshield wipers. Oh. Yeah, the back wipers. Okay. Very important. Dude, actually, more usable space. I did not, not have to move the seats. That's good. And there's a first aid kit I found. <laughs> you might need it after. <laughs> okay. All right, let's check out the cargo space on the most popular crossover. Yeah, this is, in its class, one of the most popular luxury crossovers, period. Wait. Dun, 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 dun. Hey. Dun, 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 dun. You know, maybe there's a problem. Older generation design? Maybe. I don't know, uh, but I can hold the key. Yeah. Oh, you can do it. Okay. Don't be a baby. Let me try this. The luggage thing? I just want you to know Roman would do this at the drop of a hat. Really? No. Okay. All right. You good? Oh, actually. Oh, this is nice. Oh, clothes, it's cold. Come on. So if you ever have to bring somebody over a border and you want them to be comfortable while they're hiding in your trunk, this is the way to go. So the cool thing about this car, remember I was telling you about windshield wipers, rear glass wipers? It's tucked in way over here for aerodynamics and because it's awesome. Uh, Andre, did you want out? You good? No, I, I want to sleep. <laughs> now they do build a Lexus RX, by the way, that does have a third row seat. It's a tiny third row seat, but we're not talking about that today. That is for people who have families with children who don't have legs. <laughs> okay, so this is the best part of the UX in my book. It's a Lexus interior. I mean, come on. This whole area here is right out of any other Lexus, including these control knobs, sport, normal, eco, and then over here, toggle switches, which I really like. Good positioning for this. These buttons are kind of on the small side, so for Roman with the osteo and everything else on the shaky hands, he's gonna have a hard time hitting some of these buttons. Cup holders are here, and there is a wireless charger, which is available. That is awesome too. This, I've complained about it before. Some people like it, some people don't, but this is basically the only way you can get proper control of this, your 10.3 inch screen. And that is because this screen is not a touch screen. But when you're driving, it doesn't feel very natural. The other thing is this right here. Now, this is a control area specifically for media, radio, volume, tuning, all that. And it sits right at your hand. And some people say it's really good once you get used to it. I prefer to have a dial buttons, which the other cars have. Fortunately, the rest of the vehicle is extremely comfortable up front. My tiny little sister, Andre's sister, they'd be extremely comfortable in the front seat of this vehicle. As Nathan was saying, Lexus 
interior is about style and also function. And I can see that right here in the NX. The steering wheel feels great. The gear shifter, check it out. It's traditional, it's nice. Uh, infotainment system, which is not my favorite, but you know, we're comparing Lexus vehicles after all. I think though, I can get very comfortable. It feels sporty, it feels nice. I do have my modes. I can go into sport mode as well, even though this is not an F Sport. Wow, the NX has this trippy 360 degree camera. Wow, it's got a, like a 3D animation. That's really cool. And I saved the best for last in the NX. Look at this. Yes, there is a mirror. Oh, wow. I really don't look good. Now they've been doing the RX for years and years and years, so they have to get it right. And I think they have. Except for this. Hear that? Yep. All of them make that same noise. I'm being nitpicky because that's the only complaint I have pretty much other than the fact that this is not a touch screen. It is a touch screen. Look. I'm touching the screen and it's doing things. How very un Lexus life. Now, you do have the touchpad like before. <laughs> you really don't need to use it because the screen is there. And then everything else is fairly logically laid out. And what I really like is that they've sort of combined everything good from the other vehicles. So you have large buttons throughout. You have this control knob here, which goes from Sport, Sport Plus, Normal, Custom, Eco. And you can shut off traction control. You can go to EV mode for very limited EV driving. It has paddle shifters. Paddle shifters in a vehicle that has a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, doesn't make a lot of sense. So. The bottom line is that all of this is extremely well put together. Now, for those of you who are curious, how about we look at the camera so you can actually touch different spots where the vehicle is. Very interesting. Can't do that on very many other vehicles. So this is sort of unique. Right now I'm inside the Lexus NX and it has a 194 horsepower combined powertrain and 31 mpg combined let me show you the acceleration that it's capable of the engine comes on electric motor is helping me boom you're off to the races and 31 mpg combined estimated it's actually really good for an all-wheel drive vehicle I love the overall design of the RX and the interior as well. As you're driving, you can really get a good sense of everything. But the one thing about this vehicle that you guys should know is that it has a combined 308 horsepower. And why is that important? Because it moves. This thing actually has really good power, unlike the other two. The other thing that's really cool is that it gets a combined 30 miles per gallon. Now, the NX, which has way less horsepower, gets 31 miles per gallon combined. So. This is really close, even though it has a lot more power. So yeah, you're paying for it, but what you're paying for is an excellent vehicle. This vehicle is not exactly a powerhouse. It puts out 181 horsepower. To put that into perspective, it's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a fast car. Once you get to about 25 miles per hour, then it really starts to move. But until then, it's just kind of slow and leisurely. It kind of takes its time. The good news is, it gets incredible gas mileage. Combined, 39 MPG, which is not only really impressive, but it's better than those other two. So between the fact that it's a small, kind of sporty looking little guy, and the fact that it gets really good gas mileage, well, those are the positives. So dude, I think it's crystal clear. We both know which one is the best and also which one our sisters should buy. Yeah, they might be different. What? <laughs> they might be different. I have the sticker for all three of these, by the way. Okay. So it's not much of a surprise, but you know, the UX is the least expensive one. That starts at around, the one that we have, which is fully loaded, is luxury edition, around $43,000. Okay. And then the annex, which is larger, is about $53,000. So $10,000 step. Once again, it's a luxury one. Okay. Now this RX, 
which is fully loaded and it has the F Sport package, comes out to about 63. Once again, okay. So I think we both agree NX is the best one and my sister I think would love it because it has a little bit more ground clearance. It's great, it feels comfortable, it's just right. Wrong. So the RX is the best one by far. The reason why it's the best selling vehicle out there for Lexus entirely is because it's so well made, it's so well set up, and it's such a logical vehicle. Although my nearly, you know, very, very small sister would have a hard time climbing up into it, it'd be a lot easier for her to get into the UX. I don't think I would recommend the UX. It's just not practical enough, even though it gets outstanding gas mileage. So there you have it. The NX is the best as you can see here. And of course, go back to tflcar.com where you can find out that the RX is actually the best one you can possibly buy.